What's up guys, welcome back to video number six. My name is Connor and let's jump right into this. So video six, we're gonna be looking at the advanced coaster builder. Last video, we took a look at the basic coaster builder and we made a coaster together that turned out pretty well. So next, what we're going to try is we're going to try out the advanced builder and I will show you some tips and tricks on how to make your coaster smoother and more realistic and just generally run nicely so that you can maybe learn a couple things from the advanced builder and use it in your own park. So without further ado, let's go down, click on the first tab here, select the coaster that you want. I'm just going to be using a steel coaster. We can rotate it in the direction that we want. Let's place it in. And now what you're going to have to do, you're still going to have to use the basic editor to add in a couple of station pieces here. I'll add in four off the bat, and then we can switch over to our advanced editor. Now I'll just kind of go over the basic features down below here with the advanced editor and basically the general things that you need to know. So first up here at the top, you can see we have the little box that we have on most of our GUIs, and that's just to change the color of our certain track piece and then toggle between our character camera and the ride camera. Next up, we come to the more complicated part down below. So some of these things you won't need to use often or really at all, especially this rotate and move node these ones I don't seem to use as much because they can get a little bit complicated and they're not always completely necessary, but if you want to play around with them, that's up to you. I'll be sticking to a little bit more basic directions here on how to build just so that you can kind of get the hang of it. So underneath the spherical manipulation, you can see there's a couple settings here. So some of the basic things that you see up on the screen right here is your three rotational axes. These circles control the direction and roll of your coaster. And over here you see this arrow, which simply just extends your coaster or shortens it however you want. A quick example of what each one does, the red one moves it up and down, the green one moves it side to side, and then the blue one will rotate it one direction or the other. As you can see, there is a certain length that each one can be. As well, each one can only turn a certain amount before it blocks you. One thing to stress is that it's very important to keep your track as long as possible. Go out as far as you can, which should be about right before it turns red. What this will help you do is it helps make your coaster a lot smoother. So next up, let's talk about these controls down here. First up, you have Auto Smooth, which is a very important thing to usually keep on because as you can see, as I move it up, it'll stay flat as long as I move it. As well, if I turn it, it'll try to stay straight. Underneath it we have the roll. This is the same thing as the blue circle here except it gives you a little bit more controlled accuracy with the exact number. So if you want to rotate it exactly 90 degrees you just put in 90 and it'll go 90 degrees. Then over here we just have your snapping. Each one of these numbers corresponds with how many studs that it will snap. If I turn these on you can see what the snapping kind of looks like. It looks a little bit more rigid, doesn't it? The same goes for rotating. You can see it's very rigid in this sense. To keep your coaster as smooth as possible, I like to keep these things off because it gives you very accurate and very precise rotations and length. Over on the right side, we have a couple more buttons that you're able to play around with. First off, you have your basic build, which will allow you to build your piece, and then your remove, which will allow you to remove it. You have the normal buttons that let you go to the left and right, or forward and backwards. And then you have your different types of tracks, such as train lifts, station, brakes, boosters, etc. Now we have a couple new things here. To show the example of snap to grid, say you have it rotated off a bit, and you want it to be snapped back to an area where you can use it on the basic builder. Because as you can see here, if I click build, the basic editor won't work because it's on kind of a different plane than what it's usually used to. So if I remove this, add in a piece that's kind of a bit off, as you can see, this isn't usually how the basic editor would be. You can just hit snap to grid, build it, 
and then you're able to go to the basic editor again. Next up we have reset node and this is a pretty helpful button because say you're not in an area that you like and you just kind of want to restart this track piece that you have here. By hitting reset node it'll go back to how it was in the beginning. Lastly we have pivot offset. You don't need to use this one as much because you know it's not really like important for you to use right off the bat. It's mainly to help smooth things out. As you can see, it's not doing much here. But if we zoom in, you can look right here. And you can see the track changes just this tiny little bit. This is helpful in situations where you have more of a rotated track. So if you want to play around with the pivot offset, that's up to you. I'm not going to be using it in this tutorial, just to keep it basic for anyone who's brand new to the advanced editor. So as usual, let's start out with our chain lift. You can start a coaster however you want, but I'm just going to keep it basic right now and start out with a chain lift. I'm going to go for a pretty steep chain lift so that we have enough speed to get through our coaster. Once you're at your desired height, you can turn off your chain lift. Now this is where it gets fun because you can really do whatever you want with the coaster editor. Once again, extend your track out as far as possible so that it's pretty smooth when you're going on the decline. For me, I'm going to start it by bringing it down slightly, turning it to the right, and banking it as well. This gives a nice gradual turn into our downward slope. Next, I'm going to continue with the direction that it's going so that it keeps its flow throughout the coaster. You don't want a coaster that's kind of just all jaggedy, moving around a lot, and doesn't really flow nice and evenly. So as you can see, it's starting to slope out and go a little bit more flat here, which I don't really want. So we can move it back down like this. And then if I want to turn it back in towards the front of the coaster a bit more, I can do that. So now we have this nice gentle turning decline going. I can build that. And let's continue with our track. I'll extend it out as far as it can go. Rotate it. And let's keep it going in this kind of circular shape that we have it going right now. And we'll try to get it to end up right here. It's always good to have a plan of what you're hopefully going to do next so that you can anticipate what your next move is going to be and you're not just making it blind. I'm going to rotate this back a little bit, keeping in mind what we talked about in the fourth video about g-forces. So once I got this perfectly in place, let's continue building it. Once again, we extend it, rotate it to where we want, keeping that flow going, maybe flattening it out a bit more now that we're coming to the bottom of the hill, and then we can place this in. So now once that's placed in, we got our hill generally done with much of our momentum going. So we'll continue this coaster a bit more. I'll speed it up so it's not the same thing over and over. But just remember to keep your coaster length that it's very max so that it's very smooth. And to just keep the flow going. Before I speed it up, there is one tip that I'd like to give you guys. And that is just try not to keep your track at the same level it was as you can see here. Try to either rotate it up or to the side just by a little bit so that you're not getting the motion of just going completely straight. By having it curved, it makes the coaster feel a lot more fluent. So I'll speed it up here and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. So now that I've continued the coaster a bit more, we get into the fun stuff, inversions. The best part about inversions is that you're not set to those basic editor, pre-made coaster, physics, track, things, whatever. You get to make it however you want. You can have it go up and then turn around and do a zero G roll. You can have it go to one side or have it go to the other side, or you can just really do whatever you want. So for a quick example, I'll just show you guys a quick inversion right here.
now that I've completed this inversion here, let's try not to stray too far away from our main coaster here. What we can do is we can bank back a little bit, turn it to the left, and remember to keep kind of an incline so you have these up and down movements. Another important thing to note is that you don't need to cram everything in right where you have it. It's okay to delete a couple things. You've probably seen me delete a few things just in building this coaster already. If you can't fit something, just try to rework around it so that it can fit nicely. Don't jam it in somewhere where it's not going to really work out that well. Now this is something careful to watch out for. Try not to have your track be very short and snap it to the grid like you see here. Because you can see it's a pretty quick movement from this point over to this point. And it's not as smooth as you can see the rest of the ride is here. An easy way to fix that is if you just continue your coaster, your coaster out a bit and then hit snap to grid. You can see it's a lot smoother and it ends up in generally the same area. If we hit build here, you could see it before, it had that white line trying to connect the rides. What the editor did here is it already connected them, and I can simply click build now, and it'll bring me to the end. The same thing is said for the other white line that you see connecting. You simply click that button, and it'll connect the track so that you don't need to get it exactly perfect. Man, I say simply a lot, don't I? So let's just add in our entrance and exit here and you can see the completed ride. It's not too long, but still pretty long enough that it looks decent. It looks very smooth, and it's not too large, and doesn't take up too big of a footprint either. You can also see through a lot of parts of it, it weaves in and around each other by going underneath things, over things, through different areas, and this is what a lot of coasters do in real life as well. The only thing that's missing is decoration, and that's what we'll be getting to in the next video. As you can see, it's pretty bare and boring. Though it is a decent looking coaster as it is right now, adding decoration is what brings a coaster to life and really brings out its personality. So right now, all that's left to do is test it out. Just a disclaimer before I ride this, rides won't always work. This one may work the first time I try it, and it may not. The amazing thing about this game is everything isn't set in stone. You're able to go back and try it out how you want. You can fix things, remove things, delete the whole coaster if you're really that unsatisfied with it. Or you can just go back and select a single part that you maybe want to rework. And then there you go, your coaster's fixed. But without further ado, let's give this a test. So yeah, it's true, it didn't get through everything that quickly, and not all coasters do. It's called hang time, and it's fine to have a coaster go through some areas a little bit slower. If you're not satisfied with it, like I said before, you can just rework your coaster so that it goes through a bit quicker, such as if you have the game pass adjusting maybe the friction of the coaster, or just adjusting the height of your drop hill. And as you guys saw, it was pretty smooth throughout the whole ride. Overall, it's really nice to have a coaster that's very realistic in the way that it feels by going through corners, down hills, through loops, and just many things like that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a lot to take in at once, maybe, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you learned something new about 
the advanced coaster builder, or maybe just completely everything was new to you. But that's all I got for this tutorial, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Please feel free to like the video and subscribe. Let me know that you guys want to see more of it. So that's all I got for this video, guys. I hope to see you in the final video of this tutorial series. See you then.